I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 94 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me today. This week, we continue reading through Dr. Justin Bass's book, The Bedrock of Christianity, The Unalterable Facts of Jesus' Death and Resurrection, and I am smoking the Foundation Cigar Company Charter Oak Connecticut Shade. So let's head on over to the Foundation website and see what they have to say. Long before the Dutch settlers came to our shores, the Native Americans cultivated tobacco and held councils beneath the massive branches of the charter oak tree. It is a sacred tree and is a long-standing symbol of American independence. Charter oak cigars hail from the same fertile valley in Connecticut that native son Nicholas Melillo was born and raised in. These cigars preserve and celebrate that rich local history. The cigar is rolled in a silky Connecticut shade wrapper, a Sumatran binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. This combination of tobacco gives the smoker a mild to medium-bodied smoke. And the wrapper is Connecticut shade, binder is Sumatran, and fillers are Nicaraguan. And the Vitolas are Grande 6x60. Toro, which I'm smoking, is the 6x52. Lonsdale, 6 and a quarter by 42. Petite Corona, 5 and a quarter by 42. And the Rothschild, 4 and a half by 50. And that is the Charter Oak Connecticut Shade from Foundation Cigar Company. So let's go ahead and get back into this week's reading of Dr. Justin Bass's book, The Bedrock of Christianity. And the title of this week's section is Historical Miracles. Historians who will not allow the unexpected and miraculous into their data could be missing what really happened in history. As historian Ben Meyer succinctly puts it, the historian who is committed to interpreting the past in a way that ignores miracles accordingly finds himself in a situation which does not allow him, as a historian, to come to grips with history for he cannot know whether or not the possibility he dutifully omits to consider offers the best account of a given constellation of data. Historians in this field whose philosophies can include the extraordinary and the miraculous are better guides here. When undertaken with presuppositions that allow for the unexpected, the historical sciences far from being a hindrance to discovering miracles in history, can undergird, support, and even bolster the case for a miraculous claim. 
This is exactly the case with the historical events concerning the resurrection of Jesus. And at least on the bedrock facts, Ehrman agrees, As an agnostic, I personally do not believe Jesus was raised from the dead, and so I do not believe that he appeared to anyone. But what I have to say about the disciples' visions are things I could have said just as easily back in the days when I was a firm believer. Many discussions of the resurrection are focused on just this question of whether the visions were veridical or not. I do not think it would be a historical sin at all to leave the matter of external stimuli, were the visions veridical or not, undecided, so that believers and unbelievers can reach common ground on the significance of these experiences. Therefore, the scientific tools of the historical method have led us to the common ground agreement that Jesus died on a cross and soon after his followers, individuals, and groups claimed he appeared to them alive, raised from the dead. Furthermore, those individuals formed a movement that overtook the Roman Empire and became the most influential religious movement the world has ever seen. At the bare minimum, then, we can say that these historical facts do not contradict the resurrection. Can the historian go further? I believe he can. These bedrock facts weigh strongly in favor of Jesus' resurrection. They undergird, support, and bolster the case the earliest apostles made 2,000 years ago. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15.4 Critical historians such as James Dunn, Dale Allison, Raymond Brown, and Wolfhart Pannenberg, just to name a few, agree as they all accept the resurrection of Jesus as a historical event. Pannenberg summarizes this view well. As long as historiography does not begin dogmatically with a narrow concept of reality according to which dead men do not rise, it is not clear why historiography should not in principle be able to speak about Jesus' resurrection as the explanation that is best established of such events as the disciples' experience of the appearances and the discovery of the empty tomb. If, however, historical study declares itself unable to establish what really happened on Easter, then all the more, faith is not able to do so. For faith cannot ascertain anything certain about events of the past that would perhaps be inaccessible to the historian. To the historian. The resurrection of Jesus is the best explanation of the facts. It is a foundational fact, a meta-fact. Let us then remind ourselves of the bedrock facts that bolster the grandest fact of all history, as Charles Spurgeon referred to it, before we conclude. And that's the end of this week's reading of Dr. Justin Bass's book, The Bedrock of Christianity. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to Dr. Bass's website, as well as this week's cigar. Also in the show notes are links to Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. And I'd appreciate it if you would tell your friends. So until next week... Have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.